Welcome. Hi. All right. How should I start? <laughs> well, welcome back to part three of our teaching series on worship. Um, if you've missed it, please go back to video one where we talk about God at the center of our worship. If we get that wrong, we need to start again. So if you haven't seen that video, that really is the foundation to everything that comes next. Or if you missed last week's video, click on the pop-up banner in the top right corner and see what it means that worship is a lifestyle. As I promised in last week's video, um, we will focus more so on what worship looks like in the New Testament. We will come back to the Old Testament in a, another video, but today, the church and worship. We could start with Jesus, usually that's a good starting point, but today we want to focus on the church and become a bit more practical and um, dive into one of the areas why we started this series here at St. Peter's Loud Water. Um, the reason is, if you miss that, is we start live streaming. Perhaps at this point we already started live streaming and um, that just adds another team to the whole production of what we call worship. In our sense, in this topic, as I said in the first video, it perhaps is more helpful to use a different term than worship and maybe call it liturgical worship or the production side of worship or sung worship. It depends on what we do. So that's the goal for today. And um, I have my Bible with me. It's not going to be a sermon. We won't preach. It's still a teaching series. But we will need to look into scripture and see and learn from it. 1 Corinthians 12 It's a whole chapter that talks about the spiritual gifts. And then Paul describes this beautiful picture as um, the church is one body. In many parts, many members, but one body. And we will focus on that and then read on. Because unfortunately, Paul didn't write in verses and chapters. He just wrote one letter. And then we divided it into chapters and verses so that we can read it more easily. But this, in this is a specific case, I really think ah, that's a bit unlucky um, and not really helpful that we divide the chapters 13 and 14 from chapter 12. Okay, so here we go. Paul talks about the spiritual gifts and this is the starting point for today. Kind of um, going back to what we said in the first video. We are created in the image of God. In the image of the Creator. His glory, His creatorship is in us because we are created in His image. Or as Paul says it, we all have spiritual gifts and they are very, very different from person to person. Some people have many gifts, some people maybe have one or two, but these gifts very specifically. And we need all gifts. We need every single member of our body. And I guess that's a really tough start for some of us. Because we idolize people. We really like to idolize people and think they're amazing. If only I could do it like them. If only I looked like her. If only I could do this and that and that. And we compare ourselves to others. Which is not right. Well, we can compare ourselves to others. But only if we learn to appreciate who we are. You have been given your identity your uniqueness, your gifts that no one else has. When I grew up, we had this very beautiful song. Um, it's in German, so I won't sing it. But what it basically says is, no one is like you, like the eyes that you have. They shine in a way that no one else's eyes shine. The way you smile, no one else has this particular smile. No one else sees the world you do. 
No one else speaks the same way you speak. And no one knows what you know. No one knows what you know about God. No one else has your spiritual gift. No one else. And don't deceive yourself that you have no gifts. You do have gifts. You really do. And if you believe that you don't have any gifts, if you haven't discovered them yet, I really do encourage you, press pause and pray. Press pause, take a pen and paper and start writing the things that you like to do, that you enjoy doing. Or maybe be more courageous, take a pen and paper and go wrong. Ask your family and friends, your neighbours, and ask them what they think you can do good. Ask them about your character. You have been given gifts that no one else has. And we, as a community, need you. Because without you, we are not complete. Without you, we are missing something about God. Because as a collective, we are created in His image. We need you. And you have something to contribute to the community, to your church. You have a gift that we need. You have knowledge that we need to listen to. You have experiences that we have to learn from. So that's the first part, which is essential to our idea of worship in the New Testament. You are part of the body. You are part of a worshipping community. And we all need each other to grow in our understanding of ourselves and of God. So, that's basically chapter 12. We have different spiritual gifts. And we are one body. Many members of one body. And then we could stop because the chapter ends. But it doesn't. Paul goes on. Paul goes on and starts the very famous chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. It's the way of love. Chapter 13 is core to our understanding of worship. Because chapter 13, yes, it talks about love. It does. But more so, it talks about love because it talks about worship. Worship as a lifestyle, as we heard last week. Not worship as something that we do or perform, but worship as a lifestyle, worship as living in obedience to God's word. And that is, we can do all things with the right intention and the like, right procedure in the right way, but do it wrong. And that is fascinating. We heard about spiritual gifts in chapter 12. And then chapter 13 starts with, you could speak in the tongues of angels. And it could be empty. It could be useless. It could be all vain. If it's not done in love. We can pretend to be the most spiritual people. If it's not done in love. It's not spiritual. That is why Jesus pointed at two people at the temple when um, he wanted to teach his disciples something about prayer. Prayer, again, is a form of worship. And he said, look at this Pharisee over there. He's praying loud. He's basically shouting so that everyone can hear how amazing he is and how spiritual he is, how prayerful he is. And he says, thank you, God, that I'm not like this, this guy over there. But no, I'm your man. And she said, now look at the other one. Who humbled himself before God and said, have mercy on me, a sinner. Such a different prayer. From a worldly perspective, we might think the first one is the right one. But no, 
Jesus is very clear. The other one is the proper way to worship. As we heard in week one, it's about God and seeing ourselves in relation to this creator God. So we can use all the spiritual gifts that God has given us. We can live the most spiritual seeming way and life. And it could be all wrong if it's not done in love. And here comes the famous words of, um, about love. Love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy. All these things about love are given to us to understand what a life of worship looks like. What it means to be a follower of Christ. What it means to be his disciple. What it means to be a part of the member of his body, of his church. And then Paul comes back to prophecies and tongues and rounds it up, comes back to the spiritual gifts and says, yes, we need each other. Yes, this is our life of worship. And then there is order to things, how we come together. Then, it, then it's about our liturgical prayer, our liturgical worship, what to do, in what manner, um, how many things we should like present in our in our services like how many prophecies for example should be given um, that's the liturgical prayer that flows from our lifestyle of worship and there we have it that sums up what we want to talk about this week um, as we focus on worship in the New Testament, of course, there is so much more to say. We could go on and on for weeks, um, at least, just to cover what we learn about worship from the New Testament. But I think this is something that is really important for us as church today. You have gifts that no one else has. You are part of this body. And we need to do things in love in order for them to do them in a posture of worship. Always to bring glory to God. So let me take half a minute to narrow it down for us. Maybe you're not serving in, in our church. Maybe you're going to a different church, but you're not part of a team. Um, I really do encourage you to stop that. Go and take your part. Because you have gifts, you have knowledge, you have something that no one else has. And Jesus asks you to follow him, to become part of this body. So get in touch with your church leadership. Get in touch with your mentor or someone else from church and ask, what is my role? Where is my team? Where can I be a humble servant and a true worshipper? See you next week.